Roe versus Wade, the US Supreme Court decision which for half a century has underpinned the constitutional right to abortion in America has been overturned. The court's justices voted six to three against the right, with all three of the justices appointed by former President Trump voting to strike down abortion. It will now be an issue decided by individual states with about half expected to ban or severely restrict the procedure for women. Earlier, U.S. President Joe Biden said he will do everything in his power to protect women from states where abortion will be banned to travel to states where it will remain legal. So, if a woman lives in a state that restricts abortion, the Supreme Court's decision does not prevent her from traveling from her home state to the state that allows it. It does not prevent a doctor in that state, in that state, from treating her. As the Attorney General has made clear, women must re remain free to travel safely to another state to seek care they need. My administration will defend that bedrock right. Well, for more, let's now cross to Boston and to Kimberly Mutchison. She's the co-dean and professor of law at Rutgers Law School. Uh, Ms. Mutchison, thanks so much for joining us on Euronews tonight. Now, this U.S. Supreme Court decision, does it drag women's rights and human rights back in the U.S.? Absolutely, right? I mean, it's, it's sort of devastating to me that my 14-year-old daughter is going to have fewer access to the right to terminate a pregnancy um, and fewer human rights in general than I have had um, growing into my adult life. So we are at a very, very dangerous point here in the United States today. And what about then, I mean, this, of course, impacts all women, but what about the most vulnerable? Can you sum up how that's going to, you know, affect them? Sure. I mean, so, you you know, we just heard from President Biden saying, of course, that women need to be able to travel if they want to terminate a pregnancy and states can't stop them from doing that. That assumes, of course, that somebody has the resources to travel out of state in order to terminate a pregnancy. And not all people are going to have that access. So I worry about women who are low income. I worry about women of color. Um, I worry about women who live in rural communities who might have to travel for hundreds of miles in order to be able to access um, abortion. I worry about young women who tend to find out that they are pregnant um, further along into their pregnancy. So there are lots of folks for whom their vulnerability is exacerbated by this decision. So given that context, then, I mean, you brought up um, President Biden. He, of course, said that he's going to do everything in his power to, to help defend the right to abortion states where, of course, it could be banned. But what protection can then be given in those states potentially? Well, I mean, it's a, it's a state by state issue now. So states can decide as many already have, right? I mean, just this week, we will probably see at least over a dozen states that have banned abortion. And in the next few weeks, we could have half of this country where abortion is no longer legal. Um, and that's a real problem. So there are some things that can be done on the executive level um, in terms of expanding access to abortion on federal lands, um, making sure that states don't overstep their bounds in terms of what they can do. So, for instance, trying to, you know, ban the use of pills that are used in abortion. So there are some things that can be done through the president's office. But the truth of the matter is that this is really going to be a state by state battle now. Indeed. And staying with the president and also um, going to Nancy Pelosi, they both criticized um, this court ruling and the recent New York handgun ruling. They say they contradict each other. Do you see it that way? I can see you nodding. I do, I do see it that way, right? I mean, it, there's something very shocking about this idea of folks who are fighting for this culture of life at the same time that they are fighting for people to be able to have access to weapons of tremendous destruction. Um, and I also want to note the hypocrisy of people who are fighting so dearly to end abortion in a country that has one of the highest maternal mortality rates in the world. Um, so caring about a fetus and not caring about the person who is trying to carry that baby to term or who in this case is being forced to stay pregnant when she chooses not to. Um, if that if that is the position that we want to take, then there are a lot more resources that should be put towards that kind of social safety net in this country. Right. And just quickly, um, you brought up hypocrisy there, but abortion is, of course, a deeply divisive issue in the UK. How is this going to play out in the midterms? 
Um, you know, it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. I definitely think that there are people who are going to be galvanized by what has happened here, that there are folks who thought, um, you know, we're never going to get this far, that they will not take away a constitutional right, which is incredibly rare for a court to do, for the Supreme Court to do that. Um, so I think it will play into the midterms. I'm just not sure how yet. 